Hi there, this is Lee McQueen. And I said in previous videos that every time I saw Jill Stein described by mainstream media as an anti-vaxxer, that I would use the words mass incarcerator to describe Hillary Clinton, and that I would use the word executioner to describe Hillary Clinton's vice presidential candidate, Tim Kaine. I've talked about Hillary Clinton's mass incarceration efforts, her roles in using the word super predator to create a climate of hatred, fear, and suspicion regarding African American men and women, and how this resulted in Bill Clinton enacting the 1994 crime bill, which resulted in mass incarceration. And then also um, the fact that Hillary Clinton's role did not end at just her words. She also collected checks off the men and women who were incarcerated due to her lobbying efforts. She was not an in innocent bystander. She was a participant in getting that lobbying passed. And she collected checks from the prison lobby as late as 2015, if not for Black Lives Matter, she would still be collecting those checks today. Um, so she wasn't just saying words, she wasn't just being a wife, um, she wasn't just caught up in Bill Clinton's efforts. She participated, she lobbied, she put out words of hatred, and then she stood by silent in silence and collected her checks while African American men and women lost their lives, lost their freedom, and lost their youth. And then she cashed those checks and bought a house in Chappaqua. The mass incarcerator. Now, um, the executioner, Tim Kaine, he was a former governor of Virginia, which had death, death penalty um, as capital punishment on the books. Uh, while Tim Kaine was governor, he presided over the execution of 11 death row in inmates. Um, according to the New York Times, he felt bad about it. Um, there's an article here, I'll post the link in the description, where the New York Times goes through a lot of drama and, you know, soapy soap suds and romanticism about um, Tim Kaine building a political career on state-sponsored death of uh, American citizens. So um, this is the political cap capital. Those lives did not matter um, when measured against Tim Kaine's political aspirations. And I say that um, now um, in opposition to this article, which goes through a lot of twists and turns to excuse um, the use of capital punishment um, in the state of Virginia. So um, it's saying that he was both a man of conviction, Tim Kaine, and very much a politician, a man of unshakable faith, who bent to the reality of the Democratic Party and the state he represents. So they're trying to say that he just did what he had to do, Tim Kaine, that he vowed to uphold the law, and as Virginia governor, he was sworn to uphold that law, and that's what helped him get elected. He was calm. He never let passion overtake him, uh, his reason, and he was open to compromise. He was well-liked even by many Republicans. Basically, he um, saw lives as expendable to his political career. That's what that means. Um, so, um, a lot of people who are opposing the death penalty saw that for what it was, that Tim Kaine was making excuses, um, that he was bending to political whims because he wanted longevity in his political career. And if someone had to die in order for that to happen, 
then someone had to die. And so it goes through a lot of um, efforts to say that Tim Kaine felt sad, that he talked to the prisoners, that he spent time with them, and he thought about it a lot. And, you know, it was really painful for him to send over the people to death. Um, but, you know, he's still living and they're dead. So, you know, do with that what you will. Um, anyway, so I'll just let you read the New York Times article and see what you think about it. But there's um, another way to view this. Um, in the state of Illinois, as opposed to the state of Virginia, there was a governor called Ryan. Um, Governor Ryan, and he decided that even though he was a controversial figure, that he still wanted to do the right thing. And um, George Ryan, who was governor, declared a moratorium on executions after 13 condemned inmates were cleared um, since Illinois reinstated the capital punishment in 1977. Ryan was a, a he was a Republican, and so apparently the Chicago Tribune did an investigation series that examined very closely um, each of the state's like 300 capital um, cases, and they the Tribune the Chicago Tribune exposed how biased and full of errors and incompetence um, the these cases were. And so Governor Ryan declared a moratorium, even in the face of political ill will. Um, as a Republican, he faced a lot of criticism. Um, and uh, his, his follower in office, Pat Quinn, um, also uh, faced um, criticism. Pat Quinn uh, went ahead to and... Um, commuted the cases of 15 death row inmates um, that were waiting on death row, even while that moratorium was um, going into effect. He decided to just commute their sentences, not even waiting. And so um, neither Ryan nor Quinn are governors today, and their administrations had their ups and their downs, um, controversial, but they followed their conscience. Um, and, you know, Quinn made his decision to um, commute those sentences, and then um, he, uh, let's see, he said that he um, did it after a lot of lobbying. He talked to a lot of people. He talked to prosecutors and judges and elected officials and religious leaders and things like that. And so now the uh, death penalty is completely off the books, and that's because of Quinn. It's not a moratorium. It's no longer allowed in the state of Illinois. That was Governor Ryan and Governor Pat Quinn. And so different people have different ways with dealing with the same issue. Um, the executioner dealt with his one way. Governor Ryan and Governor Quinn um, dealt with the death penalty a different way in the state of Illinois. And so it's what you make of it. I'll just post um, articles, um, both the uh, Chicago Tribune article and then the um, article on Tim Kaine from the New York Times. And you can just decide for yourself who's the hero in this story. Good luck.